Hi, welcome back to the BMW i3 DIY channel. Today I want to talk a little bit about the uh, history and why the BMW i3 i8 may have stopped production. So first we'll go over a little bit of history. The uh, i program started off in uh, 2008 with the uh, Mini E demonstration uh, being released, uh, about a thousand models, and then also being uh, continued on with the Active E in uh, 2000. 11 as test beds to uh, evaluate electric drive in a production vehicle. Also note that a new CEO started in 2006, which may have uh, had some influence on this program. Uh, in 2009, the Vision uh, Efficient Dynamics concept vehicle was shown at the Frankfurt Auto Show, and it was really the uh, template for the uh, both the i8 and then later on the, the design concept for the i3. Uh, Mega City vehicle, which is uh, here you can see that they had some preliminary concepts with a drive module and a life module being uh, separate units. As uh, it ended up actually uh, being designed as such, so more concept art uh, showed a better integrated manufacturing looking vehicle, as uh, shown here, <clears throat> and then that uh, went on. In uh, 2011, the uh, sub brand for BMW i for making vehicles was uh, announced and the uh, Mega City vehicle prototype was also shown at that point in time. And again, it followed the uh, separate drive module, which by the way, it looks an awful lot like the uh, BMW MBB Pro platform. And then the life module, which they migrated to uh, carbon fiber, uh, reinforced plastic, which no one else to date that I know of has, has done that in a production vehicle. Uh, there was a concern that there may be some additional weight uh, losses with having separate life and uh, drive modules, which I wanted to highlight. The uh, interior, I just wanted to show this real quickly, even uh, 10 years after the design was put together, it still looks very futuristic and, and modern uh, by today's standards, which I think is uh, a testament to the, to the design. The uh, first store was in London for the division store. But it looks like after that, all of the cars went to the existing BMW dealers. In 2013, the official world unveiling of the i3 occurred, and uh, uh, Herbert Dies was there, and he actually worked for BMW at the time. And the CEO, Norbert uh, Reithhofer, was also uh, present. Uh, he did actually end up leaving the company in 2015. And that makes me wonder if there wasn't uh, some sort of a management shakeup. Maybe the expense of the program was uh, an issue. The production of the i3s uh, kicked off and kind of held it around uh, 25,000 uh, a year, plus or minus somewhat, but uh, never really got more than that. So that may be an, an issue why they ended up eventually pulling the plug on the uh, i3s here starting in uh, 2022. And I think the i8 was in 2020. Interestingly, the new I division cars are all more of a standard design, uh, re resembling an ICE car uh, versus the uh, uh, Mega City design. And uh, they are continuing on with the uh, Mini Cooper electric vehicles, that basically use the same drivetrain as the uh, I3 did. So the question is, why did they move away from the Mega City platform? Uh, what was the reason? So I wanted to go over some estimations of costs and uh, Maybe we can see if from the numbers does it make sense why they did that. Uh, I had some uh, data that I had gotten from the Monroe & Associates uh, reports. I'm blocking some of it because I'm not sure if it's uh, okay for them to show all of the information. But what I did was use some of the uh, different uh, module information to understand the manufacturing cost uh, for the vehicle itself. And then we'll see if we can back engineer what the problems were. So I thought I'd take a look at what the actual gross profit estimate would be for an i3 versus let's say a Tesla Model 3 and see was it a non-profitable vehicle for BMW to produce even though it had the carbon fiber and some other innovative features or is there more to it? Uh, the best I could get for some of the cost structures was from uh, the Monroe reports and if I look at all of the different costs for the uh, features during the 2015 breakdown in the report that he had that it's showing the overall cost for manufacturing of about 31.5 for the vehicle. 
and the retail price, at least for a mid-range vehicle, the Giga World, for example, at least in the U.S., was running around 52000 uh, retail price. So that means it would have had, at least for materials, a gross, a gross profit of about 40%. Um, if you look at a 120 amp hour vehicle, the in battery cost and today's cost now, the cost of has, for the batteries modules themselves was about 334 kilowatt hour, or dollars per kilowatt hour. And in today's uh, value, with the depreciated, not depreciated, but the reduced uh, manufacturing and cost per kilowatt hour for batteries, it's closer to around 100 kilowatt hours, or $100 per kilowatt hour. So that reduces the cost quite a bit uh, for the battery pack, even though it's you know twice the size of the battery. Uh, that actually makes the estimated uh, gross profit about 44%. And uh, for a non rex if you looked at uh, the uh, 120 amp hour and assumed that it, uh, again, with no wrecks and taking out of the carbon fiber, we'll just, we'll just delete the carbon fiber part of the life cell out. That actually puts the profitability up to about 50% gross profit based on that with no, no carbon fiber. So it is a small part of the value, the cost of the car, but it's not a insignificant cost of the vehicle, which might suggest why BMW has, has um, moved away from doing a carbon fiber manufacturing. If I look at a uh, BMW or the Mini Cooper uh, two, 2023 model, uh, I subtracted out some of the uh, costs from the 120 BEV, uh, amp hour BEV numbers. Um, the uh, battery module is actually smaller. It's only a 29 kilowatt hour battery, so I took uh, some money out of that. Um, I'm assuming the drive cell and the body structure, it's all integrated and a common platform between the ICE vehicles and the EV vehicles, cutting the cost on that. And if that assumption is correct, it means that the cost for the vehicle is closer to around 20,000 and it's selling at around 30,000 so <clears throat> the uh, estimated gross profit is uh, is less now if we compare that to a Tesla we know that the uh, Tesla is selling for about 48,000 currently for Model 3 and the overall gross profit of uh, Tesla is running at about 32-33% so that means that uh, they should be getting a Model 3 cost, again, this is a rough estimate, probably around 30000 32000 for their vehicles. <clears throat> so I, I think if we look at a, a gross profitability for, per vehicle, it's not bad. So the only thing I can think of is that the, the volume is one of the major drawbacks where their fixed manufacturing costs are just not being supported by the volume being produced. And that might have some merit when you look at the volume of about 25,000 a year uh, over the life of the product from you know, early 2013, 2014 till end of life. They made roughly about 250,000 it looks like. Uh, Mini Cooper right now, they're saying they're capable of producing about 45,000 a year. And that's uh, on a shared platform. So there might be some cost advantages by making uh, the ICE and hybrid vehicles on the same basic platform to leverage the overall fixed cost. And if you look at Tesla currently right now, the best numbers I could come up with was the Model 3 and Y are producing at about 1.2 million uh, units per year. So substantially more than uh, what the volume was being produced of the uh, i3s. I just recently saw a, a video of the 1960s GM Corvair and they made about 2 million units um, over the lifetime of the uh, production run and uh, they were saying that, that probably wasn't enough or the production numbers weren't as up to the expectations. So when you talk about 25,000 
units per year. Uh, that's pretty small. So that could be what caused the problem. Or they just maybe were not able to produce enough of them either because of constraints in the manufacturability or the other issue would be the demand just wasn't there at the price point they were selling it for. And there's some comments in literature that suggest that uh, early on the production numbers were not up to the expectation. So that's what it sort of looks like. So just for fun, I estimated, well, what would a 180 amp hour uh, BEV look like for weight and cost? And um, I think there's no reason based on the uh, cost models, it would have dropped the uh, vehicle cost down to maybe a 48,000 retail. Um, gross profits probably could have been held at 40%. Um, of course, this is, this is assuming that the batteries would actually fit in the space without a major redesign and cost increase. But that would have given the vehicle about you know, 240, 250 mile range, which is starting to approach what a Tesla is. I think based on the acceleration of the Mini Cooper, with, based on the weight and similar uh, motor and electronics, I don't think there's any reason why a i3 couldn't have done, you know, low six seconds, zero to 60, maybe even approach what the current Tesla is that's running with an LFP battery at uh, 5.8 uh, seconds per zero to 60. So it wouldn't have been that far off uh, performance-wise than the uh, standard range Model 3, even though I think the perception is that it is. So it looks more like there just was a lack of uh, support, either because of the amount that they could sell because of the, quote, quirky design that wasn't enough of a market, or the uh, manufacturability uh, had some stumbling blocks that um, I haven't found, but uh, something that led to a limitation on the total volume that could be produced. So I did find some quotes from uh, some head of BMW's I division that basically said that they don't really need to use uh, carbon fiber anymore for their needs. And then another one saying that really the manufacturability uh, of a carbon fiber vehicle over you know, 10,000 run rate per year is uh, just not really efficient. So in summary, the uh, gross profits, uh, manufacturing profits of the i3 appear to be pretty decent and at the same levels are higher than what uh, an equivalent Tesla Model 3 standard range would have been or is. Uh, although the volumes are quite low either for, through demand or manufacturing ability issues or uh, bottlenecks from uh, supplies of materials, uh, it also suggests that uh, the, the Carbon fiber reinforced plastic is maybe an unnecessary cost, especially with it being more cheap to add uh, more batteries. Um, an example of that would be that the uh, Cooper Mini EV is still being manufactured at this point in time, and also there may be some volume uh, advantages with the same shared platform that they use on either hybrid or iced vehicle. Um, it also looks like a revamped 60 kilowatt hour i3 could have. Uh, given a Tesla Model 3 standard range of run for their money with the current LFP batteries that they're using. And uh, I also suggest that it looks like the maybe a change in management support around 2015 when the designs were kind of frozen at that point in time and didn't really evolve past that point in time up until the, uh, the newer models now that are much more of a uh, um, conservative or conventional design. So if you enjoyed watching this, uh, please uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And thank you for watching.